This video series will document factors affecting the integrated management of global cannabis cultivation pests and other management targets from the macro and micro perspective in an effort to designate current and predict future threats for cultivators of this crop plant. The review considers targets on a global scale in order to adequately assess them and their far-reaching influences where appropriate, such as the sophistication of biosecurity procedures in different countries, pest presence natively and abroad, and consequently the likelihood that such pest populations will expand or contract. Unfortunately, some of the information related to a review of this nature is inaccessible or incomplete, so educated speculation is necessary. Global Cannabis Integrated Pest Management Review 2019 Part 1 Cannabis Evolutionary History Susceptibility to pests is directly related to several contexts including the physiology of a plant, evolutionary pressures like pests and environmental influences that shape their physiology. The evolutionary history and ecology of cannabis is not known comprehensively and still remains academically contentious, but in recent years has made great progress. As of 2018, there are at least 10 currently existing genera in the family Cannabaceae, of which cannabis is only one. The first and basal genus from which all other genera and subsequent species arose, Aphanantha, developed approximately 70 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous period and the beginning of the Cenozoic era. This was a period that became cool globally after the infamous Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event where an asteroid made impact with the Earth 66 million years ago. Biogeographic analyses suggest Aphanantha developed ancestrally in western Eurasia and was part of the high-altitude thermophilic forests of the Cretaceous period, diversifying into many other Cannabaceae approximately 19 million years ago in eastern Eurasia. One biogeographic inference of its movement is that Aphanantha populations migrated to North America approximately 18 million years ago, to southern and southeastern Asia approximately 13 million years ago, and to Australia and Madagascar, approximately 10 million years ago. An unknown quantity of ancestral Cannabaceae populations arose and diminished in the past 19 million years or so, giving rise to the following genera developed over the Cenozoic era into the current Quaternary period. Geraniera, Lozanella, Pterocheltis, Catacma, Perisponia, Trema, Celtis, Humulus, and Cannabis with the latter two diverging from a common ancestor approximately 18 million years ago, based on plastid DNA analysis and the first seven originally grouped as the family Celtidaceae. Phylogenetically speaking, Cannabis and Humulus are sister genera, Geraniera and Lozanella are sister genera, Celtis, Pterocheltis, and Catacma are sister genera, and Perisponia is nested inside of Trema. Interestingly, Perisponia, Endemic to where is biogeographically known as Wallacea, a subregion of the archipelago between the Australian continent and the Indian subcontinent, is the only non-legume species documented that has developed a rhizobial relationship where nitrogen-fixing bacteria nodulate and colonize the root system. Comparative transcriptomics of Perisponia andersoniae and the legume Medicago truncatula revealed utilization of at least 290 orthologous symbiosis genes important for such interactions, and that several key genes had been lost in Perisponia. Parallel loss of these genes indicates that this symbiosis is not novel, but in fact at least approximately 100 million years old, shared with the last common ancestor with the legume family Fabaceae, or what have been recently reclassified to as leguminosae, which vehemently challenges the current understanding of rhizobial symbiosis hypotheses like the sanctions hypothesis and the partner choice hypothesis, and implies that most descendants lost the genetic ability to interact with rhizobia. What this means for Cannabaceae microbiome dynamics in general and those of cannabis in particular is unknown, but it is relevant to note that the order Rosales inside of which the family Cannabaceae exists is sister to the order Phagales, inside of which all Phabaceae exist, 
and that nodulation genes important for rhizobial symbiosis are likely the result of an early polyploid event concerning genes associated with older arbuscular mycorrhizal symbiosis, such as SMRC, as well as pollen tube formation and the production of hemoglobin, resulting in the production of leg hemoglobin. The polar forming pollen tube genes are related to the thread-like tubular infection structures associated with rhizobia. Fabaceae also diversified approximately 60 million years ago, similar to the Cannabaceae. Sister genera are those genera that are closest in relation on an evolutionary tree, and this relatedness is useful in tracking the evolutionary history of a set of species and other relationships like mutual microbiota and herbivores. Outside of the Cannabaceae, the mulberry family Mauraceae and the nettle family Urticaceae are sister families under the order Rosales, and potential pests may overlap in these three families. The family Cannabaceae is highly varied morphologically, with the uncommon phenomenon of monaceous and dioecious populations co-occurring in the same species appearing in several genera, including Cannabis, Celtis, Catacma, Draniera, Humulus, and Trima. Extreme oscillating geographic conditions for the prolific Aphanantha in various locations may have been a factor in so much diversity. Closely related species may share similar physiological traits, as well as pest groups, and those that are a subject of human cultivation efforts, such as Humulus, Celtis, Pterocheltis, and Trima, may be vectors therein. Paleobotanical fossil evidence exists of a purported extinct sister genus to cannabis known as Dorophibia from Siberia, dated between 34 and 24 million years ago in the Oligocene epoch. This is interesting to consider in light of the phylogenetic data supporting cannabis and humulus diverging from a common ancestor somewhat later, around the time of the Berdigalian age of the Miocene epoch possibly in the northeastern Tibetan plateau of what is now the Qinghai Lake area of the People's Republic of China, according to the Central Asian Origin Hypothesis. This area significantly changed throughout the Cenozoic era, even experiencing some glacial expansions and retreats, though there is limited information on these dynamics compared to other various parts of the world. This is significant because glaciation can destroy large populations over a wide area, while also creating pockets of space where populations separate and develop independently. Glaciation expansion caused the local extinction of many of the northern hemisphere Aphanantha, and likely affected the development of cannabis and its relatives. Approximately 50 million years ago in the mid-Paleogene period, the tectonic shifts that would become the Himalayas started to develop, and this formation intensified the East Asian monsoons, with the subsequent rising of the Tibetan Plateau intensifying the desertification of Central Asia. The Qinghai Lake area exists within this desertification range, and was for much of the time a cold, arid desert, from around 25 million years ago during the late Paleogene period to about 6 million years ago in the late Miocene epoch. It is suggested that after the Qinghai Nanshan fault line uplifted the Qinghai Nanshan mountain range around 6 million years ago, the Qinghai lake region started to change, and conditions allowed for monsoons to intensify and supply the Qinghai lake with water. Because of this change, the Qinghai lake developed approximately 4,630,000 years ago. Some research supporting the Central Asian origin hypothesis indicating that the Qinghai Lake region is a likely place for the center of origin of cannabis, perhaps for cannabis as we know it speciated, based on paleobotanical pollen data. Regardless of a Central Asian speciation origin, cannabis is thought to have largely expanded across Eurasia millions of years before Homo sapiens speciated, predating not only the speciation of chimpanzees, but human cultivation and domestication efforts, where interglacial pockets caused by constant glacial expansion and retreat would affect population dynamics. In fact, prehistoric Celtis, Pterocheltis, and Humulus pollen has been found in North America. In contrast to this Central Asian origin assertion of cannabis speciation, 
molecular analysis of five chloroplast DNA genes of 640 individual plants across various latitudes in what is now the People's Republic of China from both wild and domesticated populations supports an assertion of three main clades or groups within a single species cannabis sativa, with the basal cannabis lineage arising from Afinantha in the lower latitudes south of 30 degrees north in China. These three haplogroups, or groups with a common genetic ancestor, are initialized H, M, and L for the high, middle, and low latitudes in which they were found or found to be related. They are dated phylogenetically as occurring approximately 2,500,000 years ago, correlating with fossil records of the crown age of cannabis sativa in other research. In research related to this chloroplast DNA analysis, a relationship between photoperiod sensitivity and geographic gradient was noted, with the L group being more so sensitive to scotoperiod, the measure of a period of darkness, as opposed to photoperiod, the measure of a period of light, than M and H groups, and this may have had an additionally reproductively isolating effect, as populations of plants that do not flower at the same periods of time even if they are genetically closely related, or viable, are isolated from those that do. It is also noted in this research that several wild populations from India have very small seeds, and small seed morphology in plants is associated with both ease of population expansion and wild phenotype generally speaking, loosely supporting the possibility of a more basal origin in lower latitude areas like the Indian subcontinent rather than the central Tibetan Qinghai Lake origin, with a distance of approximately 2,700 kilometers existing between contemporary India and Qinghai Lake. The various glacial movements that pushed and pulled cannabis populations across Eurasia influenced this development, both creating physically isolated pockets of reproductive zones where, over time, a scotoperiod sensitive southern Asian population gradually moved north and developed an insensitivity to scotoperiod, the period of darkness, a key adaptation to new locations in many plants, both cultivated and non cultivated. These middle and northernmost populations between 30 degrees north and 50 degrees north latitude adapted from photoperiod sensitivity to insensitivity, one benefit of which can be the synchronizing of maturation and flower production in a population of plants, which can increase the chances of fertilization in some cases. There is a similar gradient response to scotoperiod sensitivity displayed in various cultivars of cannabis. Some are insensitive to the amount of darkness and light they receive in regards to stimulation of reproductive tissue and will flower readily, sometimes given the designation of auto-flowering, whereas others are sensitive to scotoperiod change, only flowering after a required duration of days with uninterrupted darkness have occurred. Ultimately, piecing together the millions of years of evolutionary history of a species of plant is difficult, with much detail unavailable. However, given that Afinantha successfully proliferated Eurasia, Australia, and North America, a biogeographically southern Chinese speciation event for cannabis is not an impossibility, and an Indian speciation event may be possible, considering recent research into its paleogeographic movement from proximity to Antarctica towards the Eurasian continent. The nature of the formation of the Indian subcontinent along the Eurasian tectonic plate is contentious due to issues with accurately age matching the Himalayas, and surrounding areas, but recent research supporting the Greater India Basin hypothesis establishes a two-stage impact into the Western Asian continent. It states that the landmass that would become the Indian subcontinent split from an Antarctic, southern Gondwanan origin 140 million years ago in the Cretaceous period, and made soft contact with Western Asia 50 million years ago in the middle of the Paleogene period, intensifying over 27 million years. Hard contact between these two masses began approximately 23 million years ago 
in the very beginning of the Neogene period, at which point this impact created what would become the Himalayas. By recent estimates, the first contact collision predates cannabis and humulus speciation from a common ancestor by 32 million years, and hard contact predates this by 5 million years. From biogeographic data, Afinantha is not thought to have reached southeastern Asia 23 million years ago, five years before cannabis is thought to have speciated 18 million years ago. Cannabis populations may have moved into the subcontinent before the Himalayas started to form and occlude easy land travel into what is thought to have been at the time a tropical evergreen biome. But this is speculative. An Indian speciation point would mean that cannabis populations had circumvented or traveled across land bridges and possibly over the Himalayas. In such a scenario, were a population established in the Indian subcontinent, the mountains and monsoons may have provided a significant physical barrier to reproduction later on. But how this would reconcile with current biogeographic analysis of South Asian populations of cannabis is unknown. The subcontinent of India, while traveling oceanically northward into Asia, was dominated by a wet, tropical, evergreen or semi-evergreen biome, dominated by temperate swamps and marshes in some places. Tree ferns, cycads, horsetails, or equestitales, as well as extinct relatives of spinophyllales, various mosses and herbaceous lycopods, grew extremely densely in masses. Perhaps one of the most famous examples of these plants include those contentiously classified as seed ferns in the group Pteridospermatophyta, the Glossopteris flora from the Permian, Dicroidium from the Triassic, and Tylophyllum flora from the early Cretaceous. Indeed, a synthesis of these two origins might have occurred, with the high, middle, and low haplogroups representing a part of the whole picture, either predating Indian populations being born from them, or something in between, since there have been several extant and at least one extinct sister genera to Cannabis and Humulus, it is possible, even likely, that other groups developed and perished in the interim, and the absence of their evidence is coincidental. At the very least, for the wild and cultivated chloroplast DNA populations that were analyzed, a relationship is well established, and so perhaps the most chronologically relevant speciation event may have developed in what is now the south of the People's Republic of China, where wild populations were described as being tall, thick-stemmed, with many branches, and the high-latitude populations as short, thin-stemmed, with few branches. 23 degrees north latitude in what is now Yunnan and 50 degrees north latitude in what is now Inner Mongolia were the southernmost and northernmost population locations, sampled respectively for the chloroplast DNA analysis. Contemporaneous evidence of cannabis in the form of achenes dated between 5,000 and 10,200 years ago across distal parts of Eurasia exist, further supporting this premise. If this geographic history is accurate, it can be said that the early proto-cannabis populations came from a truly ancient line in the form of Afinantha, which spread well under the elevated, warm conditions of its time. Proto-cannabis developed in a particularly arid, polar, high-elevation region that became beset with monsoons and glacial development over millions of years in neighboring areas. Cannabis then expanded around much of eastern and western Eurasia within the last 18 million years. This expansion occurred before modern humans and other hominin ancestors are thought to have developed around 18 to 13 million years ago, by some estimates. Populations of cannabis and its close relatives were exposed to and survived herbivores and infectious agents, as well as a climatic cooling, drying, and glaciation over this large geographic range. Due to the predictable nature by which certain cannabinoids break down when exposed to ultraviolet light and their presence around the reproductive structures, it has been posited that 
phytocannabinoid <laughs> development benefits cannabis as protection against ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Considering its association with the high elevation of the Tibetan Plateau and ancestral ties to the successful high elevation species Aphanantha, it might not be surprising that such structures became important traits against radiation damage in the past 18 million years. Millions of years later, humans would find an affinity for exotic phytocannabinoids by way of their endogenous cannabinoid system that serendipitously interacts with them. For the last 2,500,000 years, there have been various glacial expansions and retreats known as the Quaternary Glaciation. The last glacial maximum is the last time that ice sheets expanded greatest around 20,000 to 26,000 years ago. At this time, some parts of the Tibetan Plateau were covered in ice, and northern Europe was covered by ice, with a southern margin between 52 degrees north, close to the middle of England, and 56 degrees north, slightly north of Moscow. At 45 degrees north, glacial pockets existed as refuge for populations that were destroyed by the surrounding ice. Research has revealed a section of cannabis pollen spanning Europe between these latitudes, and this may have had a profound effect on cannabis development. Approximately 7,000 years ago, after the Holocene climatic optimum, where the environment warmed and deglaciation started, forests replaced the steppe environment, and cannabis moved into the Pontic steppe refugia and the Mediterranean coastline, and moved between the steppe and other parts of western Eurasia as glaciation retreated and expanded. These population protractions and subsequent contractions have caused genetic bottlenecks in many Eurasian plant species and cannabis indubitably went through similar bottlenecking pressure. Small populations experienced genetic drift and new genotypes arose and combined with neighboring populations and perhaps alternating diocese and monoecy as well as scotoperiod insensitivity, played a role in surviving these conditions. Historical examples and fossil pollination studies support the assertion that development of geographic speciation differences between European and Asian cannabis populations and between smaller geographic populations within each of these groups. The continuous Eurasian-wide isolating, culling, mixing, and subsequent isolating of numerous cannabis populations created by the global change in climate is similar to the famous example of Darwin's finches in the Galapagos Islands. Isolated reproductively, various populations adapted to their specific environment, with beak shape playing a primary role. In the case of cannabis, these isolated populations spanned Eurasia allopatrically and perhaps sympatrically, meaning that while there may have been a more diverse gene pool thousands and even millions of years in the past, there is only the species Cannabis sativa and its subpopulations now, which coexisted in the same general geographic area, but were separated many times over millions of years. While these subpopulations are morphologically unique, especially split between three latitudinal gradients, as well as between Western and Eastern Eurasian geographic groups, they can readily hybridize. The events of this evolutionary history influenced fundamental aspects of cannabis physiology, which are necessarily associated with its ideal and non-ideal environmental conditions, both biotic and abiotic. Consequently, herbivores, pathogens, endophytes, and other organisms in the greater developmental area of cannabis in the last 18 million years similarly adapted under the same conditions, and understanding this intersectionality and how these factors interface is useful for contextualizing the relationship between these organisms relevant to the integrated management of pests.